police station. And this incident happened just a couple of blocks from where I am right now, right over on 103rd and South Avalon. And what's incredible is it really was caught on camera from every single a every single angle. The surveillance videos all around the taco truck capturing it. And we want to go straight to some of that video so you can get a better idea about exactly what happened right around last night at 11.45 p.m. You can see two suspects, one of them in a bright blue sweatshirt, walk up to the truck and pull a gun out, pressing it to one of the employees' heads, pushing him up against the truck. Then eyewitnesses say the suspect began demanding, ca demanding cash from them. You can see from another angle how he reached his arm into the truck and pulled some of that cash out. Then another surveillance camera shows the suspect stuffing the cash into his pocket while holding an employee down with his gun outside the truck. Police responding to this armed robbery last night, you can see them there inside and outside the truck that is called Tacos Las Chemas, along with the fire department there to treat one of, at least one of the employees of the taco truck for injuries to their face who may have been pistol whipped according to the eyewitness to some eyewitnesses now back here live at the lapd southeast station we understand this is back now with the latest on a memorial day mass shooting in south florida nine people hurt after gunfire broke out on the beach in hollywood Police are asking the public to keep an eye out for the alleged shooter who has not been arrested yet. ABC's Rita Roy has the story. The search intensifying for whoever is responsible for unleashing this chaos on Memorial Day. Surveillance video released by police shows people running for safety at the beachfront in Hollywood, Florida, Monday when shots rang out. I heard like pa, 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 like about six, seven shots. Everybody started running. Everyone was praying like. It was terrifying. The gunfire breaking out around 6.30 in the evening as beachgoers were enjoying the holiday. We received a call of multiple people shot. When officers arrived on scene, there were nine victims with gunshot wounds. Five adults and four children were shot, including a one-year-old. You can see police and Good Samaritans treating victims, all of them in stable condition. An eyewitness says he saw several young men fighting in front of the stores lining the boardwalk when one pulled out a gun and started shooting. The suspected gunman seen in this surveillance picture wearing a yellow sweatshirt. Preliminary investigation revealed that there was an altercation between two groups that resulted in gunfire. He's investigating a shooting in Queens after they say a man turned the gun on a would-be robber killing him. All right, it happened around 2 o'clock this morning. Fox 5's Antoine Lewis joins us live from Richmond Hill where the man is currently being questioned by police. Antoine, what's the latest? Well, no charges have been filed as of yet, Steve, and this as investigators try to figure out if this was, in fact, the case of self-defense. The confrontation happened early Wednesday morning around 2 in Kew Gardens, Queens. According to the NYPD, a 65-year-old man says he was approached by a 32-year-old man near 82nd Avenue in Queens Boulevard who was demanding cigarettes and money. Authorities say the 32-year-old had a sharp object in hand and the encounter escalated, with the 65-year-old pulling out a handgun and firing several shots. The older man called 911 to report the incident and stayed on scene until officers arrived. Police say the 32-year-old suspect was pronounced dead at the scene with a pen in his hand. Purcell Evans lives across the street from where the shooting took place. It's a scary film, so I can imagine what ran through his head. At that moment, you never know how you're going to react. You don't know until you go through it. That's why I stay at stay in my house, because roaming around 2 o'clock in the morning, it's, it's very scary. He, he thought his life was in danger. So he did what he had to do, and there should be no consequences to him. Authorities took the 65-year-old to the 102nd Precinct for questioning. While back at the scene, detectives followed up on reports that the 32-year-old vandalized at least two apartment buildings prior to the shooting. They were joined by Queens District Attorney Melinda Katz, who was asked if the 65-year-old shooter would face any charges. We are still investigating, and as soon as we get all the facts, then we will make those decisions. It's half hour with that assault on the Long Island Skate Park. The shocking video has led to charges and a suspension. CBS 2's Jennifer McLogan spoke with the teenage victim in Greenlawn. 15-year-old Trent Roundsvall is a ninth grader at St. Anthony's High School who loves to fight with his friends at the Greenlawn Skate Park, just adjacent to the town baseball field. A ball got hit into the park, almost hit me in the head landed pretty much right in front of me so i picked it up put it in my pocket the adult league players appeared incensed they immediately came out of the dugout started cursing at me followed by an assault he's a minor he's a minor 
36-year-old Andrew Chiaro of Massapequa has been charged with Mr. Chiaro? Misdemeanor assault and endangering Trent's welfare in court papers. He told officers, I just wanted my ball back. Information tonight on the tragic death of a child left inside a car in Spring Valley, Rockland County. Police have arrested the father of the one-year-old girl. Investigators say she died after being left alone in the family's car for several hours on May 9th. The 21-year-old father was charged with criminally negligent homicide and was released on his own recognizance. Spring Valley police are refusing to release the man's name. Girl, whose body was found in a wooded area in the Bronx appeared in court today. The father was arraigned. The mother is still waiting to be arraigned at this hour. CBS 2's Natalie Dudridge reports. She said it was a mistake. We spoke to Donald Comager by phone in Louisiana. He's the paternal grandfather of three-month-old Genevieve Comager, whose death was ruled a homicide. He says his son maintains it was an accident. That day, I guess he was a little upset or frustrated, whatever, I don't know. I wasn't there, but all I know, he loves his daughter. The baby's father, 23-year-old Damian Comager, and her mother, 20-year-old Ivana Pelosi, were walked out of the 44th precinct Monday night. I love my daughter. Today, they appeared at Bronx Criminal Court, where prosecutors said the night of May 13th, Comager shook his daughter, quote, causing her to be unresponsive, resulting in her death. But Comager and Pelosi did not seek help. Instead, they dressed the infant in a onesie and a hat and placed her in a stroller and brought her to a wooded area off 161st Street and placed the baby in a garbage bag and disposed of her body. Two weeks later, on May 28th, prosecutors say Children's Services reached out to the mother, Pelosi, who said they were all alive, safe, and had relocated to Louisiana when they were, in fact, still in New York. That same day, the grandfather pressed his son about Genevieve's whereabouts. He told me that he was he shook her and he laid her down because she was screaming. And he shook her and laid her down. And, and he went to sleep because he was tired. He went to sleep and wake up and she was, she was stiff. She was cold. Donald Gomager reported his son to police who admitted what happened to investigators. He and Pelosi led them to the wooded area where Genevieve's body was disposed. I understand. No, he was going through so much of, of a struggle. And the grandfather... Richland County Sheriff Leon Lott describing the murder of 14-year-old Cyrus Carmack Belton outside a Shell gas station on Park Lane Road Sunday night. The store's owner, Rick Chow, has been charged in the killing. It's just sad. It's sad. If y'all have seen that, little, that baby man right there, that's all I can see. Honestly. The owner suspected Cyrus of shoplifting inside the store. RCSD has said did not happen. Regardless, even if he had shoplifted four bottles of water, which is what he initially took out of the cooler and then he put them back, even if he'd done that, I mean, that's not that's not something you shoot anybody over, much less a 14-year-old, but you just don't do that. At one point, there was a verbal confrontation inside the store, but no indication that things turned physical. Cyrus was running away when he was shot. The coroner's office says he had one gunshot wound to the right lower back. Deputies recovered a gun believed to belong to the victim near his body. RCSD says there's no evidence he pointed it at or threatened Chow. One woman who saw the shooting happen and called 911 is calling for justice. Do you even want to go in the store now? Because anything can happen now these days, and everybody's getting trigger happy. That young man didn't have to die like that, but for me to witness that yesterday, like, I'm in fear for my own brother. And for any of the kids that's in my neighborhood, because these kids, they come outside all the time. They come to the store all the time. Now it's like, now you got to watch your kids. This woman froze to death after she was left stranded inside of a restaurant freezer for hours. It all happened at Arby's in New Iberia, Louisiana on May 11. The tragic situation, the woman's family is now the suing the real. restaurant and franchisee. Fox 26's Natalie, he joins us live to tell us what the family's seeking. Natalie? Well, the lawsuit claims that Arby's upper management knew that the freezer's latch had been broken for several months and did nothing to fix or address the issue. They believe that this death could have been prevented. We do want to warn our viewers that some of the details we're about to hear may be a little disturbing. Her family talks so passionately about her, about how she was a loving mother. New yet these four kids won't let their mother's loving memory fade without justice. The family from Houston is now suing Arby's and its parent company, claiming gross negligence. It's one of the kind of the most horrific deaths you can imagine. 
Their attorney, Paul Skrbonik, says 63-year-old Nguyet Lee had been working at the Arby's off the South Loop West in Houston for several years, but was asked to fill in as general manager for the new Iberia, Louisiana location for six weeks. On May 11th, Ms. Lee showed up to the restaurant at 9 a.m. She began doing duties to get the restaurant ready to open that day and somehow must have gotten locked in that freezer before 10 a.m. because other employees began to show up at 10, 11 o'clock in the morning and they couldn't get in. I guess they don't give them keys. Paul said the employees called Ms. Lee's phone repeatedly but received no answer for hours. It wasn't until upper management asked Ms. Lee's son, Wynn, who had keys to the restaurant, to check on the place nearly nine hours later. The general manager realized we don't have any sales at the location today. That's really, really odd and asked him to go check things out. And that's when uh, when found his mother at about six o'clock that evening. Talking to the police officer that investigated this scene, he said she really struggled to get out of that freezer. She beat on the door as hard as she could. There was blood on the door um, and she ultimately fell face first and froze to the floor. Three year old Anthony Cunningham died Friday after being attacked by a neighbor with a sword. <laughs> yeah. A neighbor Cunningham didn't know, according to the victim's family. An attack that happened while Cunningham was cleaning the carpet in the hallway outside his apartment on his day off to make the building nicer. Jamile Cunningham is the victim's son. My father was a good dude, family man. Loved his family, loved me, my sister, his wife his grandkids. The alleged attacker, 33-year-old Aaron Matthew Bynum, appeared on a video screen from jail in Prince George's County Court today saying nothing. But in documents, investigators said witnesses found Bynum in an elevator of the Oak Crest Tower Apartments in District Heights, standing over the body of Cunningham, holding a sword, telling detectives, God told me to do that. And here in court today, prosecutors said Bynum later assaulted a detective while being interviewed at a police station saying, quote, I'm the ultimate threat. The judge here ordered a mental health evaluation. According to his son, Anthony Cunningham ran a carpet cleaning and detailing business and had taken the day off to spruce up his own sixth floor hallway when the attack happened. There was a car, um, I don't know, somehow hit is on fire outside in the parking lot at Dillard's, um, and there was two kids and a mom. We now have the 911 calls from this car fire at the Oviedo Mall. A mother is accused of leaving her two young children inside while she was shoplifting. And on top of that, police say that car was stolen. Yeah, you can see the video behind us. The fire starts inside the car, of course, and that inferno grows fast. It actually blows the windows out. And Fox 35's Connor Hansen joins us live from the mall today. So, Connor, you've been listening to all these 911 calls. What have you heard so far? Well, John, all of those callers, obviously very alarmed to see such a huge fire that close to the Dillards behind me. Luckily, somebody was able to get to those two kids before things got much worse. And now it's those children's mother who is inside the store at the time who's facing an arson charge. Now, the camera on a nearby car in this parking lot caught a close-up view of that sedan going up in flames. Police say two- and four-year-old were left in the car for up to an hour while their mother went inside allegedly to shoplift. We're told one of the children was able to open one of the car doors, and that's when a good Samaritan saw them and got them out. The kids were okay but had minor burns. When the mother, Alicia Moore, went to the hospital with the two kids, police realized she had warrants for other crimes. Now she's also being charged with child neglect and arson. But 11 bullets fly inside a packed restaurant as diners, including children, run and duck for cover. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Jessica Moore. That shooting happened in broad daylight, injuring an employee behind the counter. And tonight we're learning the suspect had been there before. CBS 2's Jennifer Bisram has the chilling video from Astoria. Frightening moments inside of a crowded Queens restaurant Saturday afternoon. Surveillance video shows people, including kids, who were sitting down eating and online waiting for food, running out of the store and ducking for cover after a gunman opened fire. At first, the gunshot hit it on the dead side. And once he, we had a lot of customers inside, once he uh, moved around, then uh, he come to the top and uh, he went inside uh, my counter. 
and did a third shot to one of my employees. Abu Tahir, the owner of Boshaki Restaurant, known for its authentic Bangladeshi food, says the gunman seen here in a mask and red hooded sweatshirt fired three shots and at one point even went behind the counter. He did not say anything. He just come and just shot and ran away. He the community leaders in the Bronx plan to hold their fourth annual march to end gun violence. This is after a violent week in that borough. Police responded to several shootings, including one that killed an 18-year-old. Eyewitness News reporter Marcus Sol is live outside of the Police Athletic League in Longwood with details. Marcus, good morning. Good morning, Michelle. And even this rec center was the scene of a shooting in January. A 15-year-old shot in the head, leaving an event here, a murder that remains unsolved. But as you mentioned, this week has been particularly uh, bloody in the Bronx. And last night, an 18-year-old shot on a basketball court at Olinville Avenue. Nixon Rodriguez shot in the chest. Police continue to investigate that incident. No arrests as of yet. And the NYPD will point out that crime stats show the numbers are trending in the positive direction. Murders down 33% citywide compared to last year. Rape is down 21%. Robberies and burglaries down 11% and a decrease in 1% in felony assault and grand larcenies as well. However, in the Bronx, uh, despite encouraging numbers here as well, this week's violence shows there is a long way to go. Ocean in Tompkins Square Park this afternoon when a woman went on what could be described as a hair-pulling rampage. Now, this video shows her walking up to strangers and violently tugging on their hair. She eventually left the park where she knocked over chairs and tables for outdoor dining. Officers arrived, took her into custody, and transported her to Bellevue Hospital for evaluation. It was crazy. She was just walking up to random people and grabbing their hair completely unsolicited. I've never seen somebody so go up to somebody and so confidently just and like take it. Now that eyewitness says the woman approached and harassed at least five people. The victims had backed apparently into this guy's driveway. He, he was not happy about it. Flagler County Sheriff's investigators say Terry Vetch was so unhappy that a vehicle briefly backed into his driveway in the W section of Palm Coast. He charged out of his house to confront the driver, who was now across the street. Vetch's own home surveillance captured it all. You've seen many, many times where, where just the anger gets a hold of somebody and they lose control about what they're supposed to do. The unfortunate thing is sometimes that ends in death. Investigators say the driver's passenger, who was knocking at a friend's door, heard the commotion and came back which is where things escalated. Suspect Vetch told deputies she was the aggressor. Come on, clear across, into my, into my yard, okay? Into my face, okay? And in a, in a threatening manner. I'm but a deputies say the surveillance shows something else. <laughs> Though the female walked toward the suspect, deputies say she was never actually on the suspect's property. Instead, they say Vetch went toward her, pulled a gun out of his pocket, and pointed it at her head. Investigators say the suspect told them when he first saw that vehicle backing into his driveway, he acted because he says he thought it was someone else, a neighbor he's had troubles with in the past. But it wasn't that neighbor, and investigators say by the time the enraged homeowner came outside, the vehicle was gone, the driver pulling forward to the correct property across the street. We ask that, that people just don't engage each other when they're in that kind of uh, 